you are about to hear is fiction, science fiction. We make no guarantees, however, how long it will remain fiction. Exploring tomorrow. And now here is your guide to these adventures of the mind, the editor of Astounding Science Fiction Magazine, John Campbell, Jr. Dreams are a remarkable thing, a remarkable power of the human mind. Freud, the psychoanalytical school, has held very important. But there's one aspect of dreaming that they deny, they overlook, perhaps. That's tonight's story. If someone handed you a photograph of a man's face and said, uh, do you know who this is? Suppose that was a photograph of yourself 20 years from now. You'd have an awful hard time recognizing that. We can recognize a picture of something that we have seen. It's impossible to recognize something that we haven't yet seen. Let's say we have a patient who comes into a analyst's office, a badly frightened man. Dr. Sharp, my name is Jim Bedford. I, I got your name from the National Health Trust. They say you're the quick shock analyst they'd recommend in this area. It's nice of the health trust to say that. It builds up my morale in these troubled post war yes, times. I speak very highly of you. I feel so darn silly running to a psychiatrist. That's for old ladies. Maybe we better forget it. I've got a lot of pressing work that I should really should be taking let's, care of. Let's see, Mr. Bedford. Now, according to the data you gave my secretary, you were with the State War Reclaim Bureau. Yes, that's, that's right. I'm regional director. I've been with the Bureau all my adult life since 1971, since the Doom War. Yeah, it must be rewarding work watching the radioactive ash cleared away, houses and stores springing up again after so many decades, seeing the city itself come back from the rubble knowing you could take a good share of the credit. That's going to be a long task, another generation. Sit down and you tell me about it. No couch? I thought all you psychoanalysts had couches. This office building was lucky to escape being hit. Yes, it's one of the few pre-war buildings left in this part of Sacramento. Matter of fact, it was your war reclaim bureau that loaned my family the money to rebuild. Doctor, why is this happening to me? What am I going to do? I, I have to stay at my job. Nobody else can do it. Nobody else knows this area the way I do. Nobody knows the people here the way I do. You were born here, William? Yes, I've lived in Sacramento all my life. What is it that's bothering you? I... I have some kind of hallucination. It keeps getting worse. I've tried to shake it, but it comes back bigger and stronger. Now it's getting so that I can't work. I can't do my job. I'm starting up recall-inducing equipment, Mr. Bedford. It'll put you in a state of semi-sleep for a few moments. I'd like you to tell me what this hallucination is. Then maybe I can tell you why you have it. And maybe help you do. Some of that black market coffee of yours or some of those eggs from your chickens. 
you know, we lost all our chickens. That blood disease from the old H-bomb blast. Take a look at this. Your application for aid? Turned down. I know. Why? Don't ask me why. I... Oh, okay, okay. I'm the responsible person. I turned it down. You and I have been friends since we were kids. Oh, so what? You get a kick out of it, Lord, and over the people you've known. People who were something in the community before the Doom War. People you had to look up to and say sir to. I'm sorry about your poultry farm. I'm sorry for all the poultry raisers, you included, and the beef raisers and the walnut growers, but certain things have to be rebuilt before others. Heavy industry comes first. Factories, steel and cement and fuel producers, synthetic fabric. We're your people. Good night, Giller. Write me a letter on the proper form. I'll talk to you in a few days about my application for aid. Maybe you'll change your mind. Come around. Try another recall. 
Not now, Doctor. You shouldn't stop at this point. I, I couldn't stand anymore. Tomorrow, maybe. We'd better go on now, Mr. Bedford. Now, from what you recall, I got an impression that there's no time to waste. I don't think they just beat you up and threatened you. I think they did throw you over the rail to your death. I think they killed you. All right, Doctor. I'll let you start your recall-inducing gadget again, but... Don't... Don't make me go back to that moment. Something else. I couldn't stand to see them standing there above me. Higher and higher, and then the ramp and the railing disappearing... At this time, I'd like you to think of something pleasant, satisfying. Perhaps a day in your work when you were particularly pleased with what you accomplished. The public baths. Kids splashing around, lots of hot water. Wonder how many of us would be dead by now. Dead from contamination from the perpetual fallout if we hadn't built those huge pools and fountains over there. It's the hardest decision I ever made. I felt like a lunatic giving them the go-ahead. A lot of people were angry about that. But after I saw the figures from the anti-radiation committee, it had to be done. No matter how many people got angry, I know my duty. It's to the whole people, not a few special groups here and there. Uh, you say you okayed the building of mass public baths, and you actually stood and watched the people bathing. That's right. Togas, like ancient times. Mr. Bedford, I want you to listen to me carefully. I have something important to say to you. What's, what, what's wrong, Doctor? Well, as a licensed general practitioner, I've been interested in the idea of public baths as an anti-radiation measure. In my opinion, it's a sound idea. But the proposal hasn't yet been put through. No baths have been built. Hmm? It'll be at least five years before the baths can be put into operation. The usual interpretation doesn't quite check. Sometimes the dream isn't quite usual. If a man has a dream of the future, it's awfully hard to identify its source because the source hasn't happened yet. Tell me, Bedford, uh, you were exposed to a great deal of radiation in the early part of your life, and so were your parents. That's right. We all were. We all went through the blasts and the heavy fallout of the war, the contamination of our food, water, homes, clothing. Do you remember any unusual exposure, either to you or to your parents, radiation approaching a dangerous maximum? I, uh... Let, let me try to remember. I, I'm confused. You think I'm some sort of a freak. Stop sitting there in the chair insulting yourself. You have to make plans. Plans? <laughs> There's nothing I can do. There's no way I can stop him. Try to remember any toxic dose of radiation, especially in the earliest part of your life. Now go back to the enemy missile attack. Sirens. Can you hear sirens? You're possibly running toward a shelter. Your family running, too. Across a field, maybe. I'm sorry, Doctor. I've had all I can take. I'll see you again some other time. You're leaving? Thanks for the help. I've got to consider all this. Maybe I'm not remembering the future. Maybe it's just a false memory, a neurotic fantasy. How could we check? If it's really in the future... <laughs> What's the matter? I... I can't get up. What? I can't stand up. I'm afraid I'll fall. Doctor, now I can't even get to my feet. Well, make yourself comfortable in your chair, and we'll go on with the therapy, as I said we should. I guess I have no choice. Now, you know what we're after this time. At some point in your life, you apparently were exposed to a near-toxic dose of radiation. Wait for me! Hey, don't leave me behind! Come on back! Hey, Tony, wait for me! Hurry up! Okay. Let's get down. Get the metal lid open. Hey, They're almost here. Get the lid of the shelter. 
close to us so we can get down there and be safe. You scared, Jimmy? Yes, yes. yes. Up in that way. Not in jail. You apologize for what you said in class the other day. You said my family moved here because they thought nobody would bomb this sector. You said my family was scared of being bombed. Okay, let's see. Yes, I remember. When Tony and I were kids during the war. We got the scuffling, seeing who was braver. And while we were scuffling, the first warhead exploded a couple of miles up the coast. So that's where you got the near toxic dose. Yes. The whole place was saturated. Hot. They had to rope off the rubble, close the roads. I was in the hospital for a month, down in the underground medical wards, along with the real casualties. Were you a real casualty? No, oh, I wasn't hurt. They made all the tests. They found no sign of tissue damage, blood count okay, bone marrow unaffected, no cancerous formations. But now you know you were affected. Yes, I was affected. Now listen to me, Mr. Bedford. You still have time to re-examine your dealings with Gillen. You mean give him the bureau funds he wants so he can set up his black market operations? No, Dr. Sharp. I have my responsibility to the people of this area. Those funds have to be given to the proper applicants. Even if it means your life? Yes, even if it means my life. I'm still not going to give Diller the funds. I respect you, Mr. Bedford. I can see why the government gave you the job. I've tried to do it right. I feel proud of what I've done. The hygienic baths, evidently I'll be successful there. That alone makes it worthwhile. I don't feel too depressed. All in all, it was worth it. A lot of people died in the war. My death? comes a number of years later, but, well, I can possibly consider it as a bona fide war death with honor. Hey, look, I can stand up now. I'm on my feet. Bringing up that material about the radiation exposure must have done it. Do you intend to come back again and see me? No, there doesn't seem to be much of a reason. I'd like to keep on trying. Maybe there's a junction of possible futures, some point in time at which we can deflect the future. That's waiting for you. Uh Uh-huh. I'll think about it. Goodbye, Doctor. And thanks a lot for trying. Did you wish to see me? My name is, is Tony Giller. I'm sorry to bother you, but this constitutes an emergency. I, I got... Well, well it, it, it's a compulsion. And it's following up my life. Sit down. Tell me about it. I, I, I have an irresistible urge to push people. Push people? Towards windows. Out. What am I going to do, Doc? There was a little shrimp of a guy I pushed once, and one day a girl I, was staring ahead of me on an escalator, and I shoved her. She was injured. I'm afraid I'll eventually kill somebody someday. Some perfectly harmless person who never did anything wrong in his life. (laughs) The stone is never afraid of anything. Stone has no sense of futurity, no sense of a future to control. And wherefore, it has no fear. If you can feel fear, it means that you can sense the future. To the extent that you can sense the future, you can control it. You don't have to be stuck with any particular future. If you take the trouble to dream about the future... Then you have a chance to do something about the future. If you don't like atomic wars, you have a chance to do something about it, provided you dream that it's there. Nightmare or not, you have a chance to do something. <laughs>